you're on the air with Florenza, your podcast destination for authentic conversations with a twist. So grab your favorite drink, get comfy, and join me on this unique literary journey. Cheers! Award-winning author and attorney Pamela Samuels Young has been dubbed John Grisham with a sister's twist. She writes gripping legal thrillers that tackle significant social issues, earning an NAACP Image Award for her work. Dwayne Alexander Smith, a screenwriter and author, is also an NAACP Image Award winning writer for his work, 40 Acres. His storytelling prowess extends from the page to the screen, captivating audiences with compelling narratives. Please welcome Pamela and Dwayne to the show. Well, thank you both so much for joining me. I am so excited to talk to you both and um, about this book, Sounds Like a Plan. Um, So before we get started, as is my custom, I like to toast to a very fun show. I am drinking um, a Merlot today, and I know that Miss Pamela, you have water. I and Dwayne, water. you are water. drinking coffee. <laughs> See, I have very good guests. I need to follow alone eventually, but toast to a great show. <laughs> Excellent. As we're getting started, it sounds like a plan um, written by Miss Pamela Samuels Young and Mr. Dwayne Alexander Smith. I want to start by talking about your character chemistry. Jackson Jones and Mackenzie Cunningham start as rivals, but develop a strong connection. Was there a chemistry planned from the beginning or did you just allow the characters to evolve into that space? Hmm. Start with that one. I think they were... Um, plan from the beginning. I mean, I think maybe they're evolved further, but as writers, you want to write something that's engaging for readers. And that sort of, that sort of professional rivalry and the tension, the sexual tension is something that you, that you want. And that I think that we also want it and intentionally uh, wanted that. Your thoughts, Dwayne? Yeah. um, It's definitely planned. I mean, everything in the book is pretty much planned. We had like a very detail chapter by chapter outline so i know some writers when they write they want to go on a journey as they write the book but that's not the type of writer i am i mean i like to plan out everything so um the character and in fact the character in my mind the characters are planned to the degree of stuff that doesn't even never appear in the book it's right. just like i know their backgrounds i know what i know what schools they went to things like stuff that will inform how to behave in, in the story Nice. So what I'm hearing is, do you have like an actual story Bible, a character Bible that you reference to as you're going, or is this something for you, Dwayne, that's just in the back of your mind? Um, A Bible, not necessarily a Bible um, in terms of the background stuff, but when I develop the characters, I do, I do get specific about like where they come from. Mm-hmm. Like what kind of household they were raised in, things like that. Again, things that might not make it in the story, but just inform how they behave, inform how they talk, inform how they carry themselves. Um, but yeah, it's not really like a Bible, Bible. Uh, I don't think I've ever shared anything like that with you, Pamela, like like a background thing. But no. we talked about the characters extensively. Yeah. But I was thinking, because we've, we've already written um, the, the second book in this series, and I think we're going to need a character Bible because it's, <laughs> there are some things that we for, forgot as we're writing. That's true. So That's make, true. What kind of car does she drive? Blah, blah, right. Right. Things. So I she's think in the Jeep and he's in, yes. <laughs> so we're going to need a Bible. We will need yeah. a Bible going forward, but we didn't have one. And I just sort of had the character in my head. And okay. you know, I see her and feel her and some aspects of her are like me. Um, so... Yeah. And that was great. That was one of the questions as I was reading it. If you each took on 
your gender roles as the characters or if you had done a flop. And as I got into the book more, I was like, no, there's no way that there's a flop here. Like the masculine role is definitely masculine the way that Jackson thinks and the way that he moves and just his internal dialogue is so masculine and um, rather sexy, I might add. So <laughs> kudos. <laughs> <laughs> no, we definitely stuck to our gender roles. I think I suggested at one point that we that we that he write the female and I write the male, but he he uh he boohooed that. And it's probably yeah, yeah. best best that it stayed that way. But I still th I think it would be a good story to tell if we did do it that way. So maybe down the line sometime. Or even just do one part of the plot that way to see what the other person would think in that specific um part of the story, just to see, you know, how they would take that on. Hmm. Excellent. Romantic thrill ride. Combining romance with the fast paced thriller is no easy feat. Can you share the challenges that you faced in balancing those two aspects of the story? Um, you want me to take that one? Go ahead. Well, I mean, you know, when I, for this type of story, I, my goal is I want to make it fun. I want to make it fun, fun. I always think I want to make it fun. I want to make it fun. Want to make it fun, right? I do want the mystery to be good. I want it to be like something that the, keeps the reader thinking. But along the way, I want to keep it fun and uh, and bouncy and and kind of light, a little light. You know, I like the banter back and forth between the characters. And again, all the stuff is kind of planned. Um, and in terms of planning it, like you know, I it's just I'm going off my you know I I'm actually a fan of this type of material, so I'm just going off my own instincts of what. You know, I like to see what I think would be fun for the audience. Nice. Yeah. And for you, Miss Pam? Um, I I pretty much agree with that. I mean, it's as 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 you know, fortunately our writing style is pretty much the same. If you read our separate books, the, the style is the same. So that made it easier to to work into the the flow and to make it happen, make this happen. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, how did you two come together to work on a project together, knowing that you are separate in terms of um, your brands? What brought you two together? Um, well, well okay, maybe <laughs> not, uh, oh, I wish well, we, you all were seeing the faces. That <laughs> no, because no, no, but we, we tell the story a lot. But so the way we met, and this is a good story. I like to tell, I like telling it because it's actually very touching. So what, what we met was I wrote, I written another book, 40 acres and it just, it had just come out. And, um, I, I didn't know Pamela at all. Like I, you know, and I, and I'd never written a book before I, I make my living writing screenplays. So I get this email from her and she out of the blue and she says, I read your book and I love your book and I'm a writer and I have all these fans and I'm going to blast your book out to all my fans and um and she said and you're gonna win the image award she said and and honestly i hadn't even i didn't even know the book was was like put up to be win an image award like it didn't even enter my mind and i don't think she did either but she just said it's gonna win it, and it did win it so i was like but anyway what she did like reaching out to me that way it was really nice and that really it just it just took me into another world of meeting all these readers and stuff that i'd never experienced before so it was very nice of her to do that you know, I have a lot of I have a lot of book club fans. I mean, black women and book clubs are just major. They're my heart, and I've yes. met with hundreds of book clubs, and and they and and when when and when they like your work, they will come back. Yes. That's my that's my bread and butter. And so I sent out uh, contacts to my readers, and to, and and if I was ever at a book club meeting, I said you got to read Forty Acres, and so that's how we uh, came together. And then flash forward a few years. He, we were friends, we see each other at book events. And then he would call and say, I got a great idea for a book we should write together. And then when he told me the concept, I was like, I'm in, nice. I'm in. And that's how it happened. So all this brilliance, all this beautifulness, all this came together because in a fan moment, Pamela, you were like, let me reach out to Dwayne and tell him how much I appreciate this thing that he's already done. Yeah, I really did enjoy 40 Acres. And I'm a tough, I'm a tough grader. I don't like that many people. And so <laughs> when I can when I can find a find a new writer and just dig in, I'm I'm a fan for life. 
Okay, so Mac Attack is much like you then in some aspects of life, huh? <laughs> I try to say no, but yes. <laughs> Would you agree, Dwayne? Do you see oh, a yes, lot? Oh, absolutely, 100%. <laughs> you don't need Very to be much. answering that question. That's okay. She asked me that question. No, okay. <laughs> I love it. And I do appreciate the build up that's between the two characters so many times when um, it has that romance element. Everything is rushed and it's just not this slow burn, if you will, to where you're getting a really good appreciation of the characters, of the story, of the plot, not just the romantic aspect, right? And you know it's coming. Like from the minute that the two characters are described, you know they're going to end up together, but the appreciation <laughs> of making us wait brilliant so I love that I, I absolutely love it and I'm not a big romance reader um, just for that reason because oftentimes it's just very predictable and it's just so fast and you're like oh, none of that will happen in real life but I could see these two characters going the path that they go in the book cultural representation is is so important especially um, in today's time as two Black private investigators, Jackson and McKenzie bring diversity to the detective genre. How important was it for you two to represent this diversity? And what do you hope that the readers will take away from it? Well, I think the diversity angle is really important. I mean, I, I started writing simply because I didn't see what I wanted to see. I'm a lawyer. And I write legal thrillers. And I always say I owe my writing career to John Grisham because I never mm. saw Mm -hmm. a black female lawyer. I never mm -hmm. saw a black lawyer in, mm -hmm. in his books. And um and one and and for a while it just would say, I should write a book, I should write a book. And then one day got up early one morning and decided to give it that go. So it's, it's really important. Uh, the way the way he mentioned earlier like wanting to write what he likes to read. And it's what I want. I write what I want to read. And I want to see people who look like me. And in the mystery genre, that's particularly in the legal thriller genre, we don't see a lot of that. Right. Not on the not on the positive side, of, exactly. Of the yeah. we we see us. and all that, <laughs> yeah, but not lead, not lawyers, you know, prosecutors or detectives or doing smart things, and you know, that's what we want to see. Yeah, I agree. I, I, and also I think this is you know just you know the, the, the making them African American or whatever is a way of making it different because a lot of these books that are similar to this or in a similar world. They don't have a lot of African American lead characters, so that's a new way. That's a take. That's a way to take it in a new direction and have a new perspective on this type of story. And like all that stuff that I loved in like you know Moonlighting and Heart to Heart and all those shows, you know, to see that from a black perspective, I thought would be kind of fun, you know. So yeah, and I and also you know me my experience going out and meeting all these book clubs and seeing all these black readers, you know, it's like. They need they need this stuff. They need something like this. They would right. they would appreciate. I think they would appreciate something like this. Yeah. And kudos to your editorial team for not changing the voices of the characters and allowing for you to make that representation real and not stereotypical of what we see in other books that are similar um, as far as the genres and. What was that process like for you working with your editors? Was it a seamless process? Did you find that you had to explain certain aspects of the story in order for it to remain? Not at all. Our, our editor Peter Borland and our and our editor and our agent Lucy um, Carson, who who gave a first pass before it went on to to Atria, um, there was nothing we had to explain. I mean, they were oh. Well, there they're was a couple of there was a couple of things really what? that Jackson would say or what or McKin that she would, like he would call her hot chocolate. Remember, there was a there was oh, yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. Some okay, okay, stuff. okay. He said, "Oh, you know, they, they said, but you know, but some there's some things that black people say, you know, that you know, right. that they were kind right. of pushing back on a little bit, but we we kind of stuck. Uh, I think we stuck to our guns on some of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's what made it so believable, like. And I think I wrote back to your PR team. I, I had only read like the first page and I sent almost in all caps. Oh, my gosh. Please tell Pamela Duane that I am a fan for life because legit from the first page, 
you know that you're reading something different and something real. And kudos to you both for accomplishing that. Now, humor. We we're talking about the hot chocolate. We we're talking about some of, you know, the aspects of um, Black love, Black romance being in that space. There's a significant amount of humor despite the high stakes um, and um, sounds like a plan. How do you balance humor with suspense to ensure that neither of the two overpowers the other? You know, I don't think that we had to work at saying, is this enough or is this not too much? Because the way the characters just came together, because even though we had an outline, Dwayne wrote the first chapter, sent it to me, and I, and then I and the outline may have had a paragraph of what we should have it. I took it gave it my own spin and wrote back. And then he wrote back. So we wrote it back and forth, back and forth. And so it just seemed to flow naturally. And then because of their personalities, there were times that he would say things that were, you know, funny or snarky or whatever. And she would shoot back. It was just, it was just an easy thing to do. I don't think we ever said we need this, we need more of this or less of this. It just flowed. No, I think, I think she's right. I think, Honestly, you know, the way me and Pamela communicate is kind of similar. I mean, I, don't you think so, Bill? But Pamela, don't you think so? It's kind of it's kind of similar. It's a kind of similar dynamic. You know, we this is true because you know, I'm the, yeah, yeah. I'm the one who really knows everything and gets everything out. As long as you're following my orders, things are working out. Mac attack too. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was like, you know, that dynamic was already there, really, you know. And, you know, we understood the characters. We really had a deep understanding of the characters. So we knew how they would react to each other. We knew how they would bounce off of each other, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of the comedy elements. And then, the, then the, the tension moments, those kind of take care of themselves. You know, when things are, when, it's, when the stakes are big and when things are going down, you kind of drop the comedy a little bit and you just kind of mm -hmm. deal with the immediate mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. What do you think will surprise the readers most about Sounds Like a Plan? That's a hard question. Surprise. I, I, well, I, 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 you go. I, you go. This my, my, my thing would be, I, people have reacted, people have read the book already. They always comment on the fact that the book is two voices. It's, it's like that that alternating voice, you know, the, the, the guy, then the female, then the guy, then the female. And that surprises some people, which surprises me because... I don't know. I don't know. I thought there was a lot of books like that, but apparently there aren't. Mm -mm. So um, I think that because, you know, going in, people, they, they always seem to be pleasantly surprised that it bounces back and forth like that. And I think the story is is kind of unique. It's not your typical missing person case. I mean, there's there's a, and there's a lot going on. There are a lot of different elements and um I think it's a smart mystery. It's not mm -hmm. just your basic predictable mystery. Do you see yourself working not just on the second of this book, but doing other things together? Dwayne, you said that you're a script writer, screenwriter for screenplays. Do you see yourself taking Mac and Jackson to the big screen? What's going on with that? The book has been optioned uh, by PET Paramount. And we're we're just we're, you know a lot of things get options, few things get made. So we're hoping to actually see it on the TV screen. That's our that's our hope. Excellent. What would you like to say to authors who are collaborating right now with other authors and finding it difficult? Speaking <laughs> for a friend, to <laughs> collaborate with someone else and not feel like you have to alter your voice for the sake of the project or um, not feel like you're going to be heard completely during, during the process? I mean, I think there are going to be disagreements. We, we had ours. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. um, and I think you, you got to uh, figure out what are the important things to, that you really want and what are the things you can, you can, you can give up and to, um, and I, I need to learn to, to, to just step away and come back the next day because uh -huh. I get hot if I was like, no, this should be this way or this way, whatever. So um, that would be my advice. Well, I think this talking, this going more what she said, like I, you know, I think a lot of when you're dealing with enough, when you're, when you're collaborating, um, there's going to be disagreements, right? But I've learned that you choose your battles, right? Like some things are worth 
you know, digging in about and some things are not. Most things are not. Mm -hmm. There might mm -hmm. be some big things that you feel very strongly about. So you got to choose your battles. Sometimes, you know, like, you know, sometimes the your, your, the person you're writing about might have a different way of doing something. It might not be bad. It might just be different, mm -hmm. you know, and you can let that go. You know, it doesn't have to be exactly the way you want to do it. But, you know, if there's a big thing or something you really, really care about, then those are the things you dig in. You can't dig in about everything because you'll never get anywhere. You know, you just won't. You got to compromise. It's definitely a You're going to work with another writer. It's going to be a compromise if you respect the person you're working with. And that's another thing. You know, if you're you're writing with another writer, you got to really respect the other writer, like what their abilities. You know, like I'm always when Pamela turns in a chapter, I'm I always tell her. She said, "Why are you talking so nice to me?" I'm gonna say, "Wow, you you knocked this chapter out. Like you did a great job on the chapter." You know, like I'm I'm like I'm I'm enjoying what she's turning in. You know, and that's that's always good for a partnership. Nice. Were either of you surprised with aspects that you had plotted for the story and you thought would stay in the story that maybe didn't make it to the final cut? Um, there wasn't much that we, we didn't stray that far from our outline, right? No, no. I'm, I'm like a super meticulous, like even more so than what we did with this, but when I write stuff on my own, I'm really meticulous about the outline. Like I don't, I don't want to think about the plot when I'm just writing. I just want to like just write it as best I can and everything's already figured out. Now I'm not saying I would never stray mm -hmm. from the outline, but it's it is kind of rare. It's like everything is thought out. You know, but sometimes, you know, but sometimes Pamela would say, and I would, you know, even I would agree, like she'd say, Oh, well, this would this would probably do be, play better this way. And I'll say, Yeah, okay, that could work that way. You know, like I'm I'm you know, but in terms of like the, the bigger, stronger, the, the broader foundational stuff of the story, it pretty much stays the same. Because, you know, in a mystery, you're setting things up and then paying them off, you know, so they have to kind of stay. And I'm not as meticulous. I mean, I do outline, but I'm I'm a little, and he, he has more extensive outlines. Like, you know, it may be a half a page describing what happens, whereas if I'm outlining one of my own books, it may be just two sentences. Yeah. And I left the process go as I'm as I'm writing. And I think there were times when in his head, you know, he has this, and if I change a little bit, he would be like, well, but that wasn't what it was like, and this is gonna affect chapter so and so. Well, we'll change chapter so and so. <laughs> so, you know, and it and it all works out. It all works out. But he can be a little little uh anal well, when there were times to stray a little bit. And again, I'm looking at it from my viewpoint. I'm not in your head when you're outlining. So. No, that's true. That's true. But I don't know if you remember, Pamela, I made a T-shirt that says, respect the outline. <laughs> <laughs> that was going to be my question. How much did you work together in terms of creating the outline that Dwayne used? Or was it like, okay, this is the outline that I'm going to go by. And then Pam, you had Pamela, you had your outline, like this is the outline that I'm going to use. Or were you in the same space creating that outline? He did the outline. He did the first draft on the outline all his own, sent it to me. We did some tweaking, not a lot. Cause it was, you know, he's really good with action and story. And you mentioned the movie. I it read like a movie when I'm writing, I, um, separately away from the partnership, I see it as a movie. I see yeah. scene one, scene two, scene three. Yeah. And yeah. so I guess with his uh, film writing background. So that outline was was pretty was pretty solid. And um we pretty like I said, we there were times when we strayed on little things, but not to yeah. overarching story. It was also an agreement. We agreed that I would do the outline. So okay. like in the next book that we're doing, she's doing the outline. Okay, perfect. Not the second book, but the next book. She's doing the, the next outline. book. How much of what you learned from this partnership did you take into your own brands or what did you walk away appreciating more with your unique brands after the partnership? Hmm. I haven't written. Um, oh, yeah, I did write one after I finished a book after our partnership, but I. I, I liked the fact that we could I could write only half a book and be done. But yes, <laughs> now I got to write a whole book. Um, and I liked the solitude of writing I my own thing and you know and, and going that route. But I also liked um, the feedback and seeing his different um, view on the same facts, even if even if it was something I might not necessarily agree with. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I, 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 I do. This is what she said. Like, um, it's, it's. I, I, I like, I like, I enjoy writing the first book and the second book so much. I enjoy writing those characters so much. That I told her, I said, you know, even if you know I'll deal with Simon and she or Atria, if they don't want to do any more books, we should keep writing these books. I really like these characters. I really like the world that they're in. I like writing this type of these type of characters and. I'm thinking to myself, maybe I should write another series. Like, well, I could do more of this, you know. Because um, I used to write movies like this, but they don't really buy movies like this anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I got to put it in book form. So, so, so doing this with her made me say, well, maybe I could do another thing like this where I could do more of this kind of like light, fun, like you know, cool character type things. Yeah. Have you found that your relationship started from um, reader to? co-authorship that is developed into this friendship to where you find yourself going oh well what would what would Dwayne say or uh, Dwayne you call Pamela's like oh I'm working on this what about this has it emerged to that to that phase a little bit of that um um I thought we were we were friends even before we started writing and there's some point in the uh writing I was like I don't know if he's my friend anymore. But then we came back around. <laughs> Wait, did you feel that throat punch? We came back around. <laughs> no, we had we had some we had some pretty big disagreements. But I I literally made a speech to Pamela. Well, I said, the second book more more than anything yeah, else. But I, I told Pamela, I said, listen, I really like you as a friend. I don't want this to end our friendship. Like we got to figure this out because you know it's like you know it's it's not that it's not that important. It's like we mm -hmm. can we can we can figure it out. So yeah, we. Yeah, it was some stressful times in the second one, but we we pulled it together, and we all good. Friends. I think we're good friends. I I consider her a good friend, nice, a very valuable friend, actually. Ditto. <laughs> nice. Well, where are the listeners able to interact with you all? Where are they able to contact you, um, to learn more about not only your projects that you're doing together, but individually? I am on TikTok. Uh, X, I hate saying X and not Twitter. TikTok, X, IG, under author Pamela Samuels, author P.S. Young. And I'm on under my name, Pamela Samuels Young, on Facebook and my website, Pamela Samuels Young.com. Yeah, I, you know, Pamela is, you know, she's way more accomplished author than I am. She has a bunch of books. I only have two or three. So I'm not so ingrained in the whole author social media thing but i do have a um a facebook a author's facebook page under my name Dwayne alexander smith okay and um i am on uh uh what is it it was it was, it was called tiktok but now it's called x no that's oh, twitter twitter, x. Hey, twitter. twitter and, x. Yeah. So, <laughs> and he just proved other. that statement of nope i'm not <laughs> exactly <laughs> I mean, you know, the thing is, the screenwriting world, you don't have that interaction with, with the reader. There's no, you're you're interacting with idiot producers, right? So you, you never have to have all that, you know? Right. So this is kind of, even though I wrote 40 Acres a bunch of, a long time ago, it's still kind of new to me. Mm -hmm. um, I like it, but, um, and I got to get better at it. Like, I have to have a website, you know, I have to do that. But, yeah, you're uh, going to have to because there's a shift now when this when this puppy publishes, you're going to find that uh you're going to have a lot of people coming up to you talking about talking about this 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 book right here. <laughs> yes. <I don't> okay. <laughs> awesome. Now, as we are wrapping up the show, I have a little thing that I do called this or that and it's going to be fun with two people. Um just to be able to hear the differences. I'm going to ask you two things and you just yell out which one resonates with you. Okay. Coke or Pepsi? Definitely Pepsi. Coke. <laughs> nice start already. Pepsi, really? It's sweeter. It's better. <laughs> Pepsi right? for kids. Anyway, I'm sorry. I hear that. Um, science or the arts? Arts, definitely. Science. <laughs> What? You 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 write films. You guys survive them. writing books together, but you are not going to survive <laughs> this or that. I pen like or, both for science. Pen or like, pencil? Like... Pen. Computer. Pen. 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 Okay. Pen, pen, pen. Um, okay. Toilet paper or bidet? 
Toilet paper. paper. <laughs> Toilet paper. I don't write them. I just ask them. <laughs> <laughs> Left or right? Right. Right. Blue or red? Blue. Hey, red. 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 Blue is boring. Blue is really boring. The sky is blue, for God's sake. It's so much blue. <laughs> blue. The sky is blue and it's beautiful. Red and you're blood. wearing blue, Pam. You're wearing oh, yeah. blue. <laughs> blue. Yeah, red is for blood. Yuck. Blood and crips. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> she outed you, Dwayne. She outed you. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> and adventure or relaxation? Relaxation. Relaxation. Okay. Oh, I'm surprised you didn't say adventure. No, oh, relaxation. Do I look like an adventure yeah. guy? I'm you kind of do, do, actually. You write, yeah. you write, a, you write adventure. Oh, well, that's right, but in terms of how I live, I'm not going surfing or anything like that. Okay. All yeah. Right. I'm not climbing mountains. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, thank yeah. This was me. Great. This was fun. fun. It went so fast. It yeah. did. <laughs> And this wraps up another episode of On the Air with Florenza. You may follow me on all social media platforms under Florenza Lee or via my website at florenza.org. Until next time, cheers.